Mr. John Trudell. Jeff. First, I would like to say uh, I'm glad that you're here, and I'm glad that I'm here. And I don't know exactly where I'm going. There's some things on my mind, and I don't know <laughs> how far we'll get. But I'm gonna, I want to say this straight up. I'm crazy, all right? <laughs> no, I really am. But I'm gonna, and I'm going to tell you this so that if I say something that you don't agree with, it's, that's what it is, all right? I'm not trying to start anything with anyone. And I want to speak to you tonight. Whatever all these identities and these things are, I want to speak to you as a human being. As human beings, because I think we're in a dimensional reality where we don't communicate as human beings, we don't identify as human beings because of the way the distortions and the imprintings have been layered and imprinted into our consciousness. So as a human being, because I think that that's, I think what technologic civilization does is it, it, a part of its mining process is to suppress and erase the memory of the human being from us and turn us into citizens and turn us into race and culture and class, turn us into gender, turn us into all of these other things that they then turn and make divisive. We're human beings. And I don't, I think that's a piece that's missing and whatever's going on is us acting from the consciousness and perceptional reality of a human being. Now, I want to, want to talk about maybe <laughs> alternative energy. As human beings, our bone, flesh, and blood is made up of the metals, minerals, and liquids of the earth. We are shapes of the earth. As all things of the earth are made up of the same DNA, same metals, minerals, and liquids, we are all shapes of the earth. Human, we have being. Our being comes from our relationship to the sun-sky universe. All things of the earth have the same relationship to sun-sky universe. All things of the earth have being. Being is energy. Energy. Everything is about energy. Spirit, everything is about energy. Everything that is going on in this dimensional reality is about energy. In our human form as human beings, our creator gave us intelligence. We were born, we entered into this dimensional reality with intelligence. Now intelligence, we feel through the being and, how, and we act through the human. And our intelligence, this is the thing that sets it all into motion. Everything that ever happens is by how we perceive reality is based upon our intelligence. Our intelligence. So if we are in this situational reality where we're looking at the predatory class, the industrial ruling class, and we're talking to them about environment, and we're talking to them about alternative energy, then we have to understand that as human beings, we are the original alternative energy source. It's our intelligence. It's how we use the energy and the power of our intelligence. Our intelligence. Now, how much power does our intelligence have? Have you ever had the feeling where you felt powerless and while you're feeling powerless how bad can you make yourself feel through your fears and your doubts and your insecurities how bad can you make yourself feel how how does this affect the people that you interact with that's power see it was, so whatever ever is going on it's not about an absence of power we have power it's just that we've been imprinted in a distorted way to perceive reality. We've been imprinted with trauma to perceive reality through a traumatized mentality. So we use the power of our creative intelligence to feed on ourselves. And that industrial ruling class is like mining for them. They mine the energy of the being through how they imprint the human to perceive reality. They mine the energy of the being through how they imprint the human to perceive reality. Same way they mine the oil, the same way they mine the uranium. They mine the being of all of these things. They mine the being of the human through how they imprint our perceptional reality, how they manipulate our intelligence. Our intelligence is the fuel that runs this so-called system. 
It's how they have taken it and they are able to use it and convert it into energy in this mining process. We're in a technologic perceptional reality where we know they can take the bone, flesh, and blood that is uranium or oil, put it through this mining process, refinement process, and convert its being into a form of energy to run their systems. And when they do this, it leaves behind poison and toxic to the environment, to the life environment. Well, while they're mining the being part of human through how they imprint the human to perceive reality, it leaves behind poison and toxic. And this poison and toxic are the fears and the doubts and the insecurities that now become a part of our perceptional reality. And once that sets in, we participate in this reality based upon the perception of our inabilities, our fears. Am I being coherent? <laughs> So everything is about energy. And we have the power, we have the power to manifest our fears and our doubts and insecurities and it keeps us off balance. It happens all the time. Keeps us off balance. No matter what mask we put on, that little off balance is in there. See, and when we're dealing with energy, the changes that we want to make in this technologic society, we have to synchronize our own energies because if our energies are off balance and distorted, then the solutions we create will be off balance and distorted. Am I still making sense? <clears throat> so understanding and our quest for spirituality, we are spirit. We're it. You want to find a spiritual way and show, show respect to the spiritual creator and the Mother Earth and all of the goody-goody things that we represent, then show respect to our creator by respecting the intelligence our creator gave us and use it in a healthy, clear, coherent, and responsible way. That's what spirituality is about. It's about responsibility. About responsibility. How can, it's about synchronizing the energy and if we're out of sync with the if our feelings are out of sync with what our thoughts, how our mind is interpreting our th feelings and projecting it out there as distorted thoughts, if we can't synchronize that, then the mining process continues to work. It continues to consume the energy, the being part of human. It's here to eat the being, the being part of human. It's like spirit eating. But we are being mined the same way the oil and the uranium and all of the other things that are being mined because we all represent the same energy source. It's just that the package and the containers are different. And they feed off of all of it. Now, the power of our intelligence. <laughs> now, yeah, <laughs> and I'm not trying to start anything, right? I just, but I got to say it because I just am compelled. I think we need to challenge certain of their concepts. See, I don't think civil, I don't think civil disobedience, violent or nonviolent, I don't think it's enough. I don't think fighting is enough. I don't think demonstrating is enough. What I think is it's time for us to understand to not cooperate with them. This is about non-cooperation. This is about taking the power of our intelligence and use it clearly and coherently rather than chaotically and distortedly because every time we do that, we're cooperating with them. No matter how good our intentions the ways of cooperation, all right? Now I want to use some words because, you know, we're a part of energy. We're a part of a vibratory reality. And when we think, we project electromagnetic thought. When we express, when we may say words, we're putting sound to go with that, that thought, that energy. We're putting sound out in the vibratory reality. And I think it's about the synchronization of sound. It's the fine-tuning. And this mining, this industrial mining, this industrial predator ruling class understands this mining process. So we have been imprinted. We have been imprinted with words that I think neutralize, all right, that neutralize the feeling that is being projected by the thought. All right, I want to go into this because this word gets, I want to go into make, to believe and to think. You can't do both. Either we're going to believe or we're going to think. And the difference is we project electromagnetic thought energy when we think. So when we're thinking, energy is flowing. It's going where it goes. It's flowing. When we believe, we've taken that flowing energy and put it into the box 
that is limited by the definitions of the believe. So this is, here's energy that should be going and finding its way into the universe so that we can create solutions being put into the box of believe. And in every solution we attempt to come up is limited by the box of believe. And you take this energy and you put it in that box of believe, it reaches its frustration points. It reaches its frustration points and, in this, and this manifests internally because we're in... We're riddled with fears and doubts and insecurities, so that these frustration points, they turn into energy that we use against ourselves. So I think we need to think about believing and thinking. When I say I think, I'm, I'm projecting this thought, I'm thinking. When I say I believe, I'm no longer thinking because I believe and I don't need to think. Am I making sense? I'm not asking if you agree, all right? <laughs> All right. Okay, that's thinking and believing. There's a distinction. Because every time, so it's almost like to me, you know, like incantations. You know, and some people, ohm, and it's how about the vibratory reality? See, so I think we have been on a mass manipulation of, our, of psychology. We're imprinted with certain words. To, we say them out of habit. I believe or I think. And I think if we say I think, we're doing something to the energy. We're doing something to not cooperate with them. It's an act of non-cooperation. Everything and the danger about believing, about believe, everything that ever happened as the civilizing process went through its motions. Number one, we are all the descendants of tribes. Every one of us is the descendant of a tribe. We are all children of the earth. At some point in the evolution of our, in our evolution, all right, every one of our ancestors met the machine, met the machine that exterminated the natives here, that enslaved the blacks. Every one of our ancestors met that machine, met that predator energy. The tribes of Europe met it. Everybody met it as it passed on through doing what it's doing. And it used violence, terror, and trauma, all right, to imprint into our consciousness to believe that their way was better. To believe because we refuse to believe in the beginning. So they use this terror and this genocide and this trauma as a part of a mining process to get us to believe reality the way they wanted us to believe it. So now we take this about believing. We take this about believing. Every negative thing that we feel about ourselves, every negative self-image that we have, every fear that eats us that we have, we... We believe these things about ourselves. And if we look at every one of these things, every one of these things was imprinted into our consciousness by someone else. We didn't think it up by ourselves. So anyway, that part. <laughs> because I look at everything as energy. And I looked at it because I come out of the 60s. So I, I'm a, anyway, I'm a child of the 60s. I'm, I'm old now. But what I remember from the 60s, what I think is lacking in my generation is I think my generation, we're not telling the generations behind us the mistakes we made. We're not telling the generations behind us, hey, look, you know, it's almost like an apology for not... I mean, our intentions were good, our motives were good, and all of that was good. But it's almost like we owe an apology to the generation behind us because we didn't... Because the beast is bigger than it was when we started out. So what happened? How did it remain the same? How did it absorb all of our energy? How did it absorb it and grow stronger off of what we were doing? It did it because we... It absorbed it. And swallowed it because everything, basically everything we did was based, was based upon our good intentions. And it was the way that our parents did it or, the, or their parents did it. And it was the way that they did it. And we went through the same motions. And we're still going through the same motions. And the beast continues to get bigger. And I find that fundamentally at it, to me, it's like we need to really slow down and think. Because in the 60s, we emotionally reacted to what we believed. We believed this was right. We believed that was right. And so they made token concessions, and then they absorbed. Well, we got civil rights, but look, you know, look at, the, look at this community. Look at the, the economic devastation. 
All right, so we got civil rights and they still turn around and do what they do. Prisons are full of blacks, all right? Women are still struggling for theirs. You look at that poverty. So everything that we did, we just held. We just held some ground that being lost in your generation and your generation has having to come up and fight this fight, so to speak. And I think it's because we didn't trust our intelligence enough to think clearly and coherently about what we were doing. I think that whatever's going on, we cooperated with them, even when we rebelled. So I'm looking at this thing about this cooperation. I think maybe, you know, and it's kind of something that it really needs to think about because every human being has to figure out what is their own idea of not to cooperate. But I'd say the first step to me is about, let's look at ourselves and recognize ourselves. This, this environmental, this better environment that we proclaim that we want. This spirituality that we proclaim that we represent. But then let's look at ourselves and recognize ourselves as human beings. Like thinking and believing. As a human being, it's our responsibility to recognize reality. Recognize the reality that we're in. Recognize rec reality. To recognize means that you look at a thing every way that it can be looked at until you see it and you recognize it. But w or we can judge reality. And when we judge reality, once again, our ability to recognize is limited by the prejudices of our judgment. See, they put these concepts into our consciousness and we use them habitually. I believe this, we don't think. We're shutting off the, we're shutting off the switch. And judge, you can tell the way that the, judge and, the judgment has taken place in this society. And what's unfortunate about it is, see, everyone that judges, we judge ourselves the harshest. Where no one really sees, we judge ourselves the harshest. So I think we need, so I think these are concepts based upon us cooperating with them. And what I'm trying to find a way is where will we really true to start, truly start thinking as about a part of whatever it is we've got to do going into the future. We base it on non-cooperation. We understand, we take the time within our own individual consciousness to understand and look and recognize the ways that we cooperate even in our rebellion. If we beat ourselves up in our heads with, I'm not good enough and there's something wrong with us, we're cooperating with them. I'm talking about non-cooperation at that basic, that basic, basic part of our own being a human being. And back to see, because life, ha we entered into this reality for whatever reason, and we all went through whatever the trauma is that we all went through. And generally as a result of the trauma, depending on how early it happens, but generally as a result of trauma, the, the traumatized blame themselves that something was wrong with them because it even happened to them. And that's where that kind of judgment, see, that's that judgment. But if we recognize reality, no one ever asked to be traumatized, ever. No one asked to be traumatized. And if we look within our own lives, all right, and understand how the bad things, the negative things, understand how they happened to us and what happened, and recognize that we never lost our goodness, we never lost our innocence, what, was, what happened is we were traumatized in such a way that it put us off a of balance, off a of center, and it distorted how we perceive ourselves and then how we perceived reality. Because I'm telling you, you know, <clears throat> what's needed is a new infusion of energy. And I think that that energy comes from clear, coherent use of our intelligence. These things that we say, we, we respect spirituality, then respect our intelligence. Use it clearly and coherently. Take care, that, that is our spiritual responsibility because everything that we create in this reality, we manifest it through how we perceive reality. We manifest it through our intelligence. Now, I don't know, oh, I'm gonna read Oh, and the other one I want to put out here because, you see, I'm not trying to start anything. 
But Obama did a really good job of imprinting certain brainwash illusions in the, in the consciousness of the people who were desperate to believe. All right? Because I noticed what was interesting, the phrase hope or change, hope, and you can believe in. You can believe in it so you don't have to think about it. You can hope for it so you don't have to truly act. All right? And the change, nothing changed. All right? Skin color of the predatory reptilian that is running the show. All right? <laughs> That's all that changed. But you get to the basic behavior pattern, nothing really changed. And I want to go to this because... See, I, and I know I'm thread, treading on fine lines here because hope and believe, we got a lot tied up, invested in that. You know, we're putting a lot of our energy into that, and I think it's feeding it into a, a void. But hope. Pandora's. The gods gave Pandora the box of evil, told her not to open it because it had the seven evils of the world in it, and it had hope. But Pandora went ahead and opened it, so the seven evils of the world came out, and then hope came out. And the God said, well, hope came out. That's to help you cope with the evil. No, that's the box of evil, and hope came out of it. No, <laughs> basic reality. It's not the box of evil and hope. It was the box of evil. So it makes me think, well, what's the role? What's this hope thing? What's this whole concept? It's like a sedation. It's like it sedates our thinking process. If I'm going to hope, it's like waiting to be served. You know, there are times when we say, I hope this, and we could say, I trust or I pray. Things that activate the thinking process. Things that activate the thinking process. See, and I, I say this at different times, you know, and I, I know people just basically blow me off because, you know, it's like we're addicted to the concepts, the words, and it's easier to, you know, feed the habit. But a lot of times we use words out of habit. See, and when we use words out of habit, not truly understanding the vibra vibra vibratory reali vibrational realities to them and the meaning to them, then we really don't understand what we're saying. It's, it's the language, it's the distortion of sound and change, altering of vibration. So we should understand the sounds that we make. You know, I put these out there like democracy, All right? You know, I, I step on democracy. Hey, you know, democracy, what does it mean? It means the right of the entitled <laughs> to have their majority rule thing. Democracy. We need to go beyond. This is what I'm saying about non-cooperation. We need to think outside of what they gave us permission to think about. We need to think like human beings for the welfare of the earth and for the welfare of the coming generations. We need to think outside of the prison that they have put our minds into. We need to understand the language that we use a little bit better. You know, and, and you look at it because it's theoretical democracy. It's not... When, it, when it's practiced the way it's supposed to be practiced, then that's the utopia. No, democracy does exactly what it is supposed to do. It creates an illusion. It creates an illusion that you got a voice, that you have a say. It creates the illusion, see? And then by the time your grandchildren catch on, see, it repeats the same re illusion because, you know, you know, I can tell the same lie over and over and over. And they trade the illusions of progress. Understand this. There's an industrial ruling class on this planet. They own democracy. They own socialism. They own fascism. They own communism. They own it all. They own every bit of it. You go to any one of these societies, any one of them, and they have a ruling class. And they do have a ruling class. They have a privileged class. They have a privileged state. They buy, their, they, they buy from the industrialist. They plunder, you know, the, they may say to, what, to you, the workers and whatever, well, we've got a better deal for you than that. But really, they're just these big corrals. Right? They're just these, they use religion and government as these huge corrals, and they herd us into these corrals, and then they feed off of our energy. And they have us quarreling about which one is better than the other. Which vampire is the best? That's how this is, is about energy. Am I getting too nuts? <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, <clears throat> See, and it's... <laughs> 
So it's time for us to take responsibility for the change it is we say we want to see. Because in some kind of a way, what's going on here, the bad guys aren't going to change, and they don't care how much we condemn them. They don't care what kind of names we call them. They don't care how we protest, demonstrate, any of it. They absorb it all. They sell us the water to drink on our protests. They sell us the magic markers. They sell us the cardboard to write our signs, man. I'm telling you, all right? <laughs> and if we cooperate, they sell us the permits. If we don't cooperate, then the police get to have war games. They absorb it all. Because we're falling into a pattern. It's a behavior pattern. And they know how to contain the energy. You permi you, <laughs> they know how to contain the energy. The thing that they fear the most. See, something, the thing that they, if there's anything that the predator class fears, it's a clear-thinking human being. It's the only thing that they fear. Why do you think they spy on everybody the way that they do? It's because they're afraid somebody might start thinking out there. And that's the only thing that they fear, is because we're now, we're now cutting off the energy for them to feed off of. We still got to participate, but we don't have to believe them. It's how we think. We have to take responsibility for thinking for ourselves because, you know, it's convenient to have a bad guy to blame. It's, it's very convenient, but it doesn't change anything. And I think when we blame the bad guys, when we go out and we blame the bad guys, but we're still disrespecting ourselves by feeding our energy to fears and doubts and insecurities when we're not sure, when we don't respect our Creator enough to truly understand our Creator didn't make us bad. That we have value. See, this is our way out, is understanding our own value as human beings. Because I think that whatever's going on in this dimensional reality, everything's about energy. Number one, I think that time is, this concept of time, I think it's on our side. I think the environment is on our side. The question to me is, are we on our own side? That's the real question. Are we giving ourselves an out because we got bad guys to blame? See, that's the danger about having the bad guy to blame because then we let ourselves off the hook. We don't have to give our best. We can, we can emotionally react and put our energy out there and create the illusion that we're really doing something besides feed our energy to the system, to the machine itself. Or we can take responsibility and be the change. You know, it's like we got to light it up one light at a time and we're all a light. Each one of us is a light. It's the energy we bring. The energy that we bring and understand that we bring energy, we are alternative energy. And we need to take ourselves seriously about this. If we're going to say to the bad guys, all right, you're, 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 you're destroying the climate. Hey, we're the ones buying the CDs and the iPods. You know, so we got to look at how all of this stuff works. You know, the, we still got the convenience of somebody to blame. But, you know, but they can only operate the way they operate if we're not taking responsibility ourselves, for ourselves. And I'm not saying trying to trash the iPods or any of that, but I'm saying, you know, what I kind of notice is the excessive need. They make a new iPhone 4 or something, you know, and how many people are out there getting it? The iPad. And they already got a computer. They already got a phone. <laughs> All right, anyway, it's... <laughs> we, they have us this overconsumpting. So if we're serious and we're for real about ch challenging who I'm going to call the bad guys, then we have to really become real to ourselves. And I think that, that that process happens by us recognizing that we are human beings. To think like a human being. Not to think like a minority or a gender or a class or a race. To think like a human being first. We are human beings first. And then everything else is secondary because if we weren't a human being, the rest, none of the rest of it would be there. All right, uh, I'm going to close this up. I'm going to read a, maybe a poem or two. Um, <laughs> that's as coherent as I could be, and I'm getting lost. So. <laughs> but all I ask is that you think about what's being said. Crazy horse, we hear what you say. One earth, one mother. One does not sell the earth.
the people walk upon. We are the land. How do we sell our mother? How do we sell the stars? How do we sell the air? Crazy horse, we hear what you say. Too many people standing their ground, standing the wrong ground. Predator's face, he possessed a race, possession, a war that doesn't end. Children of God feed on children of earth. Days people don't care for people, these days are the hardest. Material fields, material harvest, decoration on chain that binds, mirrors gold, the people lose their minds. Today is now and then, dream smokes touch the clouds. On a day when death didn't die, real world time tricks shadows lie. Red, white, perception, deception. Predator tries civilizing us, but the tribes will not go without return. Genetic light from the other side. A song from the heart, our hearts to give. The wild days, the glory days, live. Crazy horse, we hear what you say. One earth, one mother. One does not sell the earth, the people walk upon. We are the land. How do we sell our mother? How do we sell the stars? How do we sell the air? So, to think about, to just think about and consider, there's nothing wrong with us, all right? See, it was religion that came in, and religion's a mining tool. It's religion that convinced us that there was something wrong with us. It's religion that put it into our perceptional reality when we were young and there was no one to protect us. Because the ones that would have protected us and tried to protect us, protected us, they were slaughtered 1,500 years ago, 2,000 years ago, they were slaughtered. And they had to learn how to fear. They had to fear and submit to this thing that told us there was something wrong with us. But there is nothing wrong with us. But when we're young, you know... The guilt, sin, and blame stuff. And as soon as, that, as soon as that latches into us, as soon as we grab that concept, we never truly recognize ourselves with clarity. And I'm telling you, there is nothing wrong with us. We may have had wrong experiences. We may have even done wrong things. But our essence, the spirit, the being, there is nothing wrong with us. And we need to truly think about that. We need to think about it. Time has ways of running along, but time is only a dimension. Then someone broke the light between what's right and wrong. Don't it make you want to cry? Don't it make you want to scream? We've had all we're ever going to have and lost those dreams we were going to dream. Then someone broke the light, shaking the sky, shaking our soul. Don't it make you want to cry? There was pain bleeding from our eyes, but we do what we have to do. We can't promise we had no idea. What we did led to what we're going through. The passion of want, the passion of need, the passion to love, the passion to hate, the passion of passion, the passion to live, the passion of destiny, the passion of fate. We believe, we love, we love, we believe. Then come those cracks in our world, shaking the sky, shaking our souls, new wounds on scars that are old. If we could take it back, what would we take? And what about that part that says to forgive? When the mirror looks at us, who do we see? And how did we get ourselves into this destiny? All right, so I'm going to close it. But I'm asking, think about what, <laughs> just think. We can't, we will never outfight them. Get over that. We can outthink them. That's the only way out. And I'm going to say this about the fight thing. All right, and I want to throw this out there as long as it's, you know. It's about evolution. Not revolution. It's about evolution. Life is about evolution. We are a part of the reality of life. Life is about evolution. 
We have had it imprinted into our consciousness to be revolutionary, but I'm telling you, it's about being an evolutionary. An evolutionary understands that it takes some time. An evolutionary knows it's what we truly put into it in the long run over time. The revolutionary has never ever won. The revolutionary has always had to become the state in order to protect their revolution. This is reality. This is reality. Tell me what revolution took place that did not have this, the, the human beings at some point in the history of it had to rise up and have another one. Things to really think about. Things to really think about. Evolution. We are a part of an evolutionary reality. Evolution means change and continue on. Revolution means you come back to the starting point. You always come back to the starting point. It's just a matter of how fast or slow you spin. Evolution. No offense. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for John Trudell. For those of you that are interested in some of John Trudell's work, dance. over here in the corner, the Fire lady in the turquoise. Dream visions in dreams. Freedom, living strongest desire. The little people listen with a fancy step. Village, a restless drift, a wind blowing in. Fire in the village, smoke in the eye.